Joel, not, uh, not, not to, obviously not wanting to give anything away, Puss in Boots, um, <laughs> but there is there's a, an, an incredible arc within your film that has an incredible character within your film that is as, um, you know, that is as, a, a, I would say adult, that is, that is as for, is, is done in a mature, as a mature way that as, I, as I've seen in a film like this. So, um, do, you, do you think that a studio like DreamWorks and, and, and projects you're involved with will continue to use the medium to tell stories that aren't necessarily ones that are expected to be told in the quote unquote, you know, family animation uh, uh, form format. Yeah, that's um, yeah. Coming off of Puss in Boots, it was an interesting kind of discovery working on it, where the premise is Puss, Puss in Boots is a cat who's burned through eight of his nine lives, and that's it's a, an absurd kind of fairy tale premise. At the root of it is this emotion of Puss realizes he has one life to live. live and as we were talking about what, what is the feel, what is the, the tone of this, this story, we wanted it to be a celebration of life. And in order to get that feel, we needed to address death. And that was kind of like you're saying, a big swing in a way of going, how can we make this family movie approach a topic of death so that you can appreciate life. And I gotta say the studio was incredibly supportive um, and trusting where we went, we made the decision early on to go, how do we get the audience to ground and feel the stakes of the movie? And we have this scene that's after a fun introduction of Puss and him coming from a doctor's office to go, he's on his last life and he kind of brushes it off. There's a scene where, um, I'm not giving too much away, but there's a bounty hunter that comes for him. And Puss is so proud that he's never been touched by a blade. He's never lost a life in that way. And we really commit to the moment's cut, making it visceral, impressionistic, and showing blood, I think for the first time in a DreamWorks movie, that if there's no jokes around it, we wanted to kind of knock the wind out of the audience. So that they're right there with that character to feel that low. And um, the studio, RJ Cohn and Kristen Lowe were, were like, this is bold. We see why it needs to be in here. And then we tested it with preview audience. And <laughs> one of the things that was surprising with the preview audience, the kids were so open to this discussion of death. You think what people have been living with for the last couple of years of mortality is on the top of their minds. And it's, I think, an opportunity in family movies to go, we have to stop treating kids like everything has to be candy coated. Um, and Pixar, like you're saying, does this wonderfully. Um, and uh, Turning Red uh, was so beautiful because of so many, I think, older thematic elements in it. Um, Spider-Verse was a great kind of pushing what you expect to see. And I feel like in general, it is like a big ocean liner that we're shifting slowly, but it takes a while to turn because with everybody's unique way of telling a story, I think it grabs more of the general audience. There's no one way, you know, we could do it through comedy, we could do it through dramas, action movies, but it's like, it's slowly, I think, shifting the zeitgeist that, that everyone feels like, oh, animation could be way more and way more elevated, but I think we have to keep pushing and finding our own unique ways to tell personal stories. I, I, I apologize for, for gushing about this, but what you just described, since I've seen it, it's just, it's just so wonderfully done. I, I haven't seen it in a film, like this type of film, it, and you, it just, I'm sorry. It's just fantastic. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. I guess we're going to have to see Puss yeah. in Boots. Joel, <laughs> when I get back to L.A., can you hook it up, man? Yeah, you're just going to have to go see it. Come on by, man. And you'll know exactly what I'm talking about when you see it. That's the thing. Um, okay. Um, there seems to be... Uh, Joel, I'm going to stay with you because 
there are elements like this in the film. And I, again, I don't know what you can share, but there seems to be a movement afoot to craft more stylized, mixed techniques and elements in the big studio features. You know, elements of 2D stop motion, uh, animating on twos, comic book graphic style. Uh, is this becoming, I, I understand that stylistically, a director would love to be able to do this, but is it actually now becoming more of a necessity? Because audiences, once they get a taste of something, they kind of now expect it, and they don't want to look at kind of the same old 3D CG. Joel, why don't mm -hmm. we start with you? Yeah, I, th I think it is a necessity uh, that helps the filmmaker tell their story. And it's, it's like expanding the toolbox that we're using visually. And I think for, for me, it was so wonderful to go, this idea of, of everything looking like a fairy tale, that I think once you break what the audience is used to, where it's everything looks CG, you're allowed to, like you're saying, tonally, we went to some darker places, but because it's not literal seeing every hair every freckle on characters anymore it's impressionistic in what we were executing that went hand in hand with um tackling emotions of fear and that can be um more of a um, abstract visualization of it that helps you go we don't have to be so literal to cg anymore that and i think it just it's an exciting time because the studios are definitely seem to be um, embracing that and DreamWorks with, with bad guys and uh, Puss in Boots, you know, it was just a wonderful year that we kind of feed off each other. Um, Pierre, I know we, because you guys were ahead of us, when we were trying to find the painting style, we were even going, how far did, did they go with bad guys and what's for our movie? And it's kind of this, this little community that we geek out together. Um, so I guess I, I don't know that I answered your question, Dan. But, uh, it's an exciting time for me. Uh, you answered it enough. Um, Domi, I know <laughs> in, in uh, Turning Red, there is a lot of anime influence. 